All right, let's do this. Welcome all uh, to uh, today's Walk Listen Cafe. Uh, I will be your moderator for as long as my connection holds. Um, and we've got uh, as our guests today, uh, Elm Erturk and um, Bernd Rauer, both are currently in Vienna. Um, now, Elm is a researcher, artist, and curator who, uh, when COVID permits, uh, which hasn't been uh, very kind to her recently, shares her time between Vienna and Istanbul. Um, and uh, she has a background in social design, fine arts, photography, and cultural management. And she's currently the co-curator of the Memory and Art Project uh, in Turkey, or the Memory and Art in Turkey Project, uh, as well as a PhD candidate at the Acad Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna. And her current work focuses on contemporary art practices in connection to memory and public space, as well as artistic research on social issues and creating platforms for urban participation. Um, we also have Bernd Rohrauer, who is a bit of a rare hybrid. He has a background in social and social sciences, um, but although originally um, he was based in the fields of painting and video arts, he moved over and crossed a kind of bridge, if you will, from canvas to social spaces. And he has been working as a researcher and as a social work scientist in the fields of community work, urban social development, and homeless assistance systems in Austria. And he's also a bit of a follower of uh, Henri Lefebvre, and I hope that we are going to be able to talk a little bit about that later on. But we'll see how it goes. Um, and his professional and art-based practice deals with urban participation, appropriation practices, and distributive justice. And with that, you can see a little bit the link with uh, Henri Lefebvre. They are both founding members of Shared Walks, and that's why we are here today. Um, to listen to, uh, uh, to listen to them talk about their work, which is an initiative that creates social encounters and critical spaces by walking together in cities, in small groups, and around particular themes. And with that, I'm handing over the microphone to Elm and Bernd. Um, thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, maybe I start. Uh, um, thank you, Babak, Gert, and Andrew for the invitation, um, and thanks for joining us today. We will talk about Shared Walks what, uh, with Bernd, um, which we initiated in 2018, uh, where we met uh, at Social Design Studio at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna. Um, we both have quite mixed backgrounds, as you have seen. I think it has affected our approach in, um, in developing shared walks this way. Um, I have worked, I'll shortly introduce myself uh, and its connection to um, the shared walks. I have worked in art institutions and NGOs dealing with social issues through artistic practice in Istanbul for more than 15 years. And I think there I have developed this insight in local work with different groups of people, uh, mainly with socially and politically marginalized ones. And especially in my work at Anadolu Kültür, um, I have worked a lot for bringing people together from different ethnic backgrounds and cultural and economic backgrounds uh, through informal learning and trainings and uh, production, especially in visual arts. Uh, now being based in Vienna, I'm partly here, but also co-curating the project, as Babak had mentioned, on arts and social memory uh, for the last three years, where we have made an archive of more than 400 artworks uh, dealing with human rights issues. And then working on this archive, we have, uh, in an interdisciplinary way, uh, we have developed responses with different people and the book will be coming uh, this summer, hopefully, in English also. And uh, Bernd? Okay. Um, yes, I think Babak um, introduced us so good um, um, that um, from my side there is not a big need to, to explain, but maybe leading into this um, um, project or, or the shared walks, um, because what is clear that Elam and me, we come from, from um, quite different uh, fields and um, Elam at the time where we met and started was, um, I met her as a, um, um, 
very dedicated to the walking practice, like uh, walking through the city. Um, and and me at this time, I was um, very occupied the years before already with um, um, the method development in um, socio-spatial research, more from the social science um, side and visualization and mapping. And this is how um, we started um, to to come closer to our uh, project idea, which in the beginning, and now I, I think I will go into the topic, um, if okay, um, led us to the shared walks. Um, so to start with, so this is a bit of an overview over the next um, 15, 20 minutes, um, what we will be talking about. Um, I will start with what's in the box, what is a shared walks, um, and then um, give you some um uh, an overview on um the process um how it started from the idea and and to what um we came up with uh, finally or until now um question of proposes use cases how it's implemented how can it be used and um then we will um, go more into detail and look um on the types of walks that is in um and then um um, coming more into the interactive part and the discussion by presenting you um, what are our findings, what are the perspectives we found, or the questions that we are still, um, the topics that are still ongoing. So what is shared walks? Um, um, to, to tell it short, um, it's, a, it's a card set based method um, which makes use of walking as a shared practice, a low threshold, easy accessible practice. Um, for social uh, spatial appropriation, social inclusion, and uh, civic participation. So this was our um, interest in the beginning to look at walking as a very easy to access practice in its potentials um, for uh, in directions of social um, um, qualities, inclusive qualities. Um, what does shared walks? Um, it um, it connects people to walk uh, together by. Um, opening playful spaces for um, exploration and it initiates social interactions and creates awareness and questions daily life routines um, yeah so how did it start um, in the beginning um, we were questioning the social and inclusive potentials of walking as daily life practice and thereby we were a lot inspired by um, the variety and um, um, of walking practices um, across disciplines um, from ethnography to arts from urban planning to psychogeography and all around the world so very various field of uh, um, um, and, and playground of very different approaches um, and this brought us to um, um, a very basic question um, and this was um, how can we walk with others um, and this initial phase of shared walks was designed as walking research laboratories in Vienna. Um, and this happened from March to June 2018. And here we were including and mixing different approaches from social sciences um, to artistic research. Um, and the main aim was to gain knowledge on different aspects of walking together as well as make participation possible for diverse groups of people in the city. Um, and within this um, walking research laboratory, participants um, actively got involved in the process by experimenting different types of walks um, with someone else, um, exploring the city with different perspectives and reflecting on the process in questionnaires at the end of the walks. So this was how we collected knowledge. We proposed uh, walks that we did on desktop research before and, and within these walking research labs, participants were invited to try out, to give feedback, to respond. Um, and this was then this creative process of um, developing um, 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 methods, which, um, which now are also a, a main part of, 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 of the outcome. Um, in the second phase, and based on our experiences with the walking research labs from the first stage, um, we focused then on local interactions through neighborhood mapping. Um, this happened from September to November 2018, and thereby we extended the walking methods from the previous labs and combined them with collab collaborative mapping um, in neighborhoods, thereby 
areas were mapped by participants from different perspectives and the outcomes were collected both on a physical and um, on an online map immediately after the walks. And since then, since 2019, uh, Shared Walks continues as a project um, with the aim to open um, the method um, for, um, for use um, of other initiatives um, and bring it to broader public um, to become used in, in different contexts. This is um, an image of um, this online uh, a map um, and uh, like the labels that are shown here will later be um, 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 explained or more topic when ALM comes to the types of walks. The question is, uh, what is it for or what can it be used for? Um, in general, you can say shared walks cards that deals with themes related to senses, to perceptions and bodily experiences in physical, uh, in public spaces. Um, it deals with personal memories and social histories for collective imagination and narration. Um, it issues personal limits or challenges personal limits in relation to others in society and creates awareness on cultural diversity in cities. Um, it's about discovering the symbolic dimensions of physical spaces and um, on finding comfort in people and places by exploring and discovering public spaces. So with, with these um, topics inscribed, um, um, it opens up quite a wide range of contexts uh, to be um, um, adopted to, um, mainly um, oriented on topics of participation, community building, neighborhood mapping, but also when it's about um, you know, bringing different people together, different professions together, like um, to enrich uh, biodiversity, different perspective, um, awareness raising, um, non-informal uh, learning and um, networking, things like that. And so this is very wrapped up and fast um, before going into the walks. I'm, I'm uh, first um, to give an idea on, on how it's practically usable. As I said, um, um, it is it, it was created then also to be shared um, also as a method. Um, um, and it's quite easy accessible through um, the web page where we provide it uh, to be downloadable under a Creative Commons license. So everybody can download um, um, the card set. Um, um, and then it's quite important to bring it into this local context. So, um, what, what, what shall it be used for? Um, what are the, the aims, um, on the target? What is the topic? Um, what, what groups are to be targeted? And then to do this practical contextualization, like, um, how to frame it, um, um how to invite uh, people. Um, it's about then to um, prepare a setting, so to choose um, a location of an area of interest um, um, and um, by setting up, um, like bringing people in, guiding people, uh, um, introducing people to the process. And when the method itself starts, it's first to uh, pair up um, participants. So the walks happen um, in groups of two. Um, and um, it's randomly um, selected, so ideally people don't know each other. Um, also, the walks they select is is randomly chosen, and um, these couples then um, get an empty map of the area, pencils, and will then walk, um, share their, depending on the walks they choose, um, um, make notes, um, share ideas, um, perceptions, come back, and in the final step, um, 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 document, um, reflect and prepare um, the outcomes which they want to share either within their group of two or um, to bring it to a more public via mapping um, or optionally here it's also um, um, other methods that can be implemented like group discussions or um, depending then on the local context or concept. I think this was quite um, fast and, and short <laughs> and I'm happy that later we will have time to go more into uh, to get, uh, give you some more, more concrete ideas if questions shows up but now I will hand on to Elen to um, continue with the walks. Yeah I will also try to be quite brief uh, but it's also we will look at the types of walks uh, there are 30 different types which are grouped in six, six different thematic areas these uh, teams, in fact, summarize 
the issues that shared walks in principle deals with. Uh, there are five walks under each team, but we also encourage people who want to organize uh, shared walks by themselves to add new walks that can be developed in their own context in different geographies. So the first category, um, Senses Alive, we called it, uh, puts a spotlight on our senses. So focusing on our bodies, especially on only one sense has the potential um, to increase the intensity of our perception, especially while walking. So the walks about senses challenge and shift the ways uh, we perceive the environment. Uh, it can be through, for example, tasting and touching the places, uh, tasting things on our route or touching the places we walk or concentrating on the sounds or silence or the smells in the city while we walk. So we have uh, only left uh, the blind walk. We have to uh, thought about it, but uh, it may uh, invite some dangers in the urban uh, context. So we kept uh, the sight out of our senses. Uh, the second part, um, the one is uh, about fiction and non-fiction, we call it. Uh, the walks dealing with this uh, team are the most imaginative ones for uh, me. They uh, mainly open space for remembering, uh, imagining together while walking and making, um, I would say, narrative interventions in the city. You can um, talk on real memories about the neighborhood or uh, create stories or talk on dreams about places. So uh, some, for example, name walk, uh, where you make up names for places or you can also uh, make, uh, I would say, more ephemeral visual interventions by walking a shape on your route. So these walks uh, combine the past and present and dreams and realities. So they're moving between real and um, unreal. And in that sense, they're quite playful, but also can be very socially concerned uh, depending on the place and context you use it. Uh, for example, here uh, in the next uh, slide, you see uh, a name walk, uh, Bernd um, can we? Um, this is um, a, a name walk uh, made by, uh, yeah, this one, um, made by two participants uh, walking during uh, the Urbanized Festival back in 2018. They have walked in a newly developing neighborhood where uh, there are interesting architectural examples. Uh, you may like it or not, but these kind of new residential complexes are now part of every urban landscape. And these participants uh, decided to draw buildings and imagine names for them. Can we see the next one? Um, they, uh, for example, called the buildings as Candy, the ship, Gungalow. And so it was kind of all the way through their route. They were looking and searching for these buildings and giving them names and discussing on the feelings, uh, on the, the how they imagine these buildings are intervening in, uh, into their site in the, as the, in the landscape in the city. Um, the next one is the, about personal limits, uh, we call it. Uh, these include the most challenging walks. Uh, our experience has, experience has proved this. Uh, I will read the walks and then you decide if they are really so. So the first 11 one is walk hand in hand, which means with your walking partner whom you have just met. Uh, twelfth one is an open door walk. Uh, enter every open door you see on your route. Or a speed walk. Walk halfway very fast, halfway very slow. But very slow is really very, very slow. Uh, so people can really recognize that you're walking very slow. Um, the other one is chase people walking. Of course, without disturbing them, but how can a chase be? This was also yeah, initiated by a derive we have made. Um, and the other one is ask random people to join their walks. So imagine yourself making one of these walks uh, in the city where normal life is going on and people probably will be staring at you. That is the very feeling and I think the challenge we want to address with this type of walks in the personal limits, how you deal uh, with the, the limits uh, of your body, how people perceive you, how you put, want to see yourself in the society. These kind of questions were, um, yeah, 
uh, were the ones that we wanted to deal with. Cultural traces is the next one. Um, these are more um, cultural traces. What we mean by that are uh, the, 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 the culture um, we see in the city, uh, which can differ in many different ways uh, in different geographies. Uh, the walks about cultural traces uh, mainly aim to create awareness on the diversity of the urban life. These traces can include creative expressions in the urban space, subcultures, different ethnicities, languages we see on the streets, ways of living or um, the ways of exchange in public spaces. So by collecting traces and images of diversity and commons, uh, the walks, these types of walks, encourage uh, a deeper look at our environment, uh, questioning the roots and possible stories behind what we see uh, and call as these traces. And in the next one is invisible spaces. Um, this one includes walks related to invisible spaces what we mean by invisible here is the sim symbolic dimension of physical spaces in our neighborhood. By initiating talks on concepts related to especially current social issues and interpreting the spaces uh, from different points of view, these types of walks propose to imagine new spaces for the public good. For example, what symbolizes um, uh, power for you in a city? Or where do you feel insecure on the streets? What kind of places create conflicts? and what kinds uh, pave the way to social encounters. Uh, can you find shelters, unassigned shelters for people or other living beings in an urban environment? So these walks search for answers uh, for, to these kind of questions. The one you see here is an example uh, of a power walk um, where the participants felt that the space occupation of big companies, the one uh, on the right upper side, and car parking places are the spaces of power, especially in terms of the rigid space uh, they occupied in the city. So there were many examples like this we had the participants prepared and they are uh, there you can see on the website also on the map. Uh, the last category um, looks at the bright side. Uh, where do we find comfort in a city? The walks under comfort zones try to highlight our understanding and habits of finding comfort in public spaces with the others, especially. These walks propose to find places of comfort either by resting in the parks and greens uh, or by avo avoiding the surveillance, as in the surveillance walk. And the last one, um, number 30, is an open walk, which everyone who had selected that uh, uh, walk was uh, struggling a lot. Uh, surprising that I don't uh, we were quite surprised to see this uh, in the open walk where you have the freedom to decide what kind of walk you want to make but then um, having the freedom to make the choice becomes is it a comfort or a responsibility and people were kind of a bit hesitant uh, to choose what they really want so this was really again very quick overview of the teams and walks we have dealt with in our um, events and all in all this is uh, yeah i'll just go through as an outcome um, uh, a bit on the findings and challenges what we have learned through in this process and then i think it's a good um, way to open up the discussion also uh, all in all we have organized uh, 17 events in the last three years with the participation of around 150 people and the types of events uh, included uh, the ones in festivals and the NGO collaborations and art and walking conferences. Our process-based research ended up in a toolkit which we offer also on the website as open source and can be downloaded and used by other people but we also go uh, to collaborate with organizations and festivals to do the same thing. And this toolkit is in English German now, and it can be downloaded from sharedwalks.com. And recently we have prepared a French Dutch version in collaboration with Urbinat uh, from Brussels. And this will also be available soon on the website. What we have realized that is uh, the toolkit is quite adaptable uh, to be used with different aims in different contexts. We have used it in for as a in a methodology sharing uh, environment uh, with a company uh, collaboration. 
um, or we were in many festivals, uh, in art festivals, but also in urban planning or urban related festivals. But we were also invited to buy Gebitsbetreuung, for example, in Vienna, uh, which is a local agency for community building where they uh, wanted to also offer uh, people who have moved into a new neighborhood and don't know the environment and don't know each other to come together and also kind of initiate the social uh, yeah, coming together, uh, the first encounter. So they wanted to use it as a tool. Uh, so, yeah, Shared Walks creates random social encounters in a playful way with the different types of peoples, the, uh, people, and this randomness uh, showed, our experience showed that works in a good way, mostly. Uh, it helps in raising awareness on the environment and uh, on changing perception with different focuses because you change the way you walk, so it just focuses on an aspect of walking an aspect of yourself, an aspect of your relation to the person and to the environment. So this focus can help in changing your perceptions. But on the other hand, there are also some major challenges in implementing shared walks. The, one of them is one um, about participation. If you make an open call for participation, which we do mostly, uh, it's mostly limited to people already interested in walking. So then the question is how to really get different um, people from different backgrounds get into this so that these random encounters are working in a more um, yeah, holistic way, I would say. In order to overcome this, we have tried many different strategies, but the most efficient one was always making collaborations with local organizations. Uh, who already have direct reach to their people in their locality. And the second challenge, uh, I will say as a researcher, is the hardship of measuring the effects on the participants. We have not yet done um, a research on the effects, uh, but can, it can be possible, but it can only be possible with a long-term approach, with a long-term collaboration uh, in an area where you visit all the time and you can see the change. Uh, let's hope for the future, I would say, not yet done. So what do we have uh, for the future? We continue, I mean, because of Corona, um, nowadays it's uh, resting a bit, but we will continue in organizing workshops in different contexts. But we also encourage people to use, download and use the method from our website. I also invite you, who all of you, if you're interested to have a look and if you would be interested, you can also contact us uh, if you need help and we can also yeah, promote and uh, announce your events. Um, and as a last point, uh, we are also developing a new version, uh, Shared Walks Climate Emergency, Climate Change Card Set, which is still in progress uh, in collaboration with a scholar, Aisha Mert uh, from Stockholm University, who is working on international uh, climate uh, policies. And this will be, hopefully, if the conference happens, uh, will be presented in the Climate Existence Conference in August, into this August in uh, Sweden. So, yeah, I think this is it. I hope we are not, uh, we have used our time efficiently. And now the floor is for the, open for the questions, I guess. Babak. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, that was great and extremely uh, an, an extremely efficient use of your time. I am impressed. Um, high information density. Uh, I've got, uh, but thank you very much. Very insightful, very interesting. Um, I've got a bunch of questions, um, but some of you also have questions. You can put questions in the chat if you want, uh, and I might pick them up and I might ask you to ask your question yourself. You can also uh, raise your hand literally um, but I might miss this in uh, the overview of, oh, there's Fiona already raising her hand. My God, this is moving fast. Um, I might miss that. Uh, so you can also raise your hand digitally uh, if you select, I think it's the people, yeah, the people tab on the right. Um, you can raise your hand digitally and I might then notice it too. So you could do both. Um, so there's two questions from the chat. I'll go to those in a second. There's Fiona who wants to ask a question. 
Um, but one thing I would like to say, what I like uh, about the randomness of the encounters that you say you facilitate with the cards, for me, some of you probably will know that uh, I am part of the team behind something similar. It's called the Reeve app. It doesn't really matter too much. But what I like about what you do is, uh, and that's very much for our, um, uh, that's also very much our intention, is that this randomness is a way to counter the uh, spectacle of the city or the directiveness of how we are uh, forced to and uh, forced to deal with what we encounter in everyday life. Um, so I like that very much. Um, now, one question that I have for you in relation to where you have your workshops, uh, you you mentioned it briefly uh, in the slide with outcomes or results, I think, um, the, the tension between um, doing these things in known places and not known places, or people being familiar with the place or not familiar with the place. Would you say that the effectiveness of your workshops is higher or are they more effective in places where the participants know the place? or in places where the participants don't know the place? I will start, Bernd, maybe you add. I mean, as we haven't really measured, so it's very hard to tell very concretely, but from observation, I would say it has pros and cons both ways. If people don't know the place, um, yeah, I mean, that may spark more interest in people because this they want to see it as a way to um, to discover the neighborhood with someone. Uh, this is uh, this uh, yeah new discovery effect, I would say. Uh, people who know the place or people who think they know the place is... Yeah. Uh, yeah, thinking that you know the place is a disadvantage because you've been living here for 20 years or I don't know, for 10 years and then you think you know the place but you never, because you're so much in the place, you, you're you used to seeing the same thing the same way you, you develop your habits. In fact, I think it could be more effective with people who are living in the same place for a long time to have a different perspective or a deeper look into something. Uh, but it's harder to get people who think they know the place uh, as participants. Uh, Bernd, do you have anything yeah. to add? This was my first, yeah. No, it's quite similar to uh, what, 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 because uh, both qualities on both sides, but the more I think of it, the more or what I have in mind, as you said, we did not um, um, evaluate it, um, um, but um, I still from, from the very first um, walks from this walking research labs, um, what caught my interest more were, were people who, 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 who um, knew these places quite well and then shared their surprise um, 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 on different aspects. So how they were surprised, um, um, what they found out about the uh, um, area which they know as, uh, they thought they know as their pocket. Um, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, what is also quite what what happened also what 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 is interesting is that there's also the possibility that um, as it's couples um, that it's mixed so um, that one person um, um, knows the place quite good and another does not um, and uh, I mean our main interest was that we never wanted to have something like a guide or so so it's also interesting what what power or what, what relation happens there is it then. Um, the person who, who, who can explain, um, the knower who, who, who knows the area and shows the other one. And um, from what we've got so far, um, um, this, this, this seems not uh, um, um, always been to be the case that um, uh, because this is also then very depending on this. Uh, so the types of walks, so this focus on a specific type helps a bit to nivellate this. Um, um, yeah. Um, thanks. Uh, also related to this, I think, is um, what you brought up with one of the sets or one of the themes, uh, which I think was called personal limits, uh, which you said was maybe the trickiest one because these the, the walks or the tasks in this set um, require quite a bit of input and action from the participants. Uh, so how, how does that play out in practice? Are people... Uh, reluctant to participate? Are they eager to perform? Uh, and how? Do, what kind of dynamics does that result in? 
um, in the personal limits, there is this walk hand in hand, and it was, and somehow many people picked it up randomly, and like half the people who picked it in our experience in the 17 didn't want to do it. Or some of them really wanted to make it because it can be two men, two women, or different ages, someone you don't know. So they were, they didn't want to walk with hand in hand with the two men uh, in an environment where they know everyone or where they don't want to be seen that way. Or it can be the other way, someone, it, it can be, you know, this, a woman and a man. But I mean, it was our experience that, uh, yeah, hand in hand was a bit too intimate. And it's also really physically the limits of your body. But in the other ones, I don't remember uh, people rejecting to walk any of the walks. Bernd, was there one? With the Yes, with the hand in hand, it it, it sometimes happens that that um, um people said, but uh, yeah, you said so. Huh? The hand in hand, the hand in hand is is I think the only one I have in mind that people said no, we definitely don't want to do this. Um, sometimes it happens where people um say, okay, no, no, I really don't want to do this kind of work, but this hand in hand is the most. Um, challenging, but it's also very dependent on the context. Uh, um, so uh, related to target groups, which is clear. So it makes a difference to do it at an art festival with young people, or um, um, it's this Gebietsbetreuung where there were mainly um, elderly people who were more interested in the neighborhood, uh, the the building development, um, where we um, um, where this was, I think, the first and I think the only time where we where we felt okay it might have been a bit misplaced because the expectations of the participants were too focused on something else as what we offered there um, but this is another topic though in general it's very context related yeah yeah what i like about methodologies like this is that uh, they are really designed almost to nudge people out of their comfort zone um, but that also might, of course, then result in people being pushed maybe a bit too much out of their comfort zone. But then again, that might result in you know discussions between the pairs of uh, walkers, right? So it might still be uh, uh, then considered a kind of success. But this then ties into another question I have, and also one that Fiona brings up, and maybe why she raised her hand earlier, um, <clears throat> is how you collect uh, data and feedback from the walks, what you do with it, whether you post it online or somewhere else or make it available in a, a paper. Um, but then also uh, you brought, you, you um, uh, touched upon this in your last slide. Um, you questioned the success of these things based on the fact that you don't really know what success is, right? When are these things successful? Um, so then how do you document is the question here, but also what could uh, how could success be measured, or what is success? What could success be? I think, I mean, because it's, it's all different levels now. I would say, um, if if I if I perceive um, shared walks as a method to be shared, um, then um, the um, the success um, is not to be defined by the method of shared walks, but um, by the project which implements shared walks as a method. So it's a, if it's a community project um, or a neighborhood project, um, it's to be defined um, by the project itself and 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 from the methodology of the project um, to um, be seen. Um, is this method um, suitable for achieving this goal, or can it be suitable? Um, um, do you understand what, how, how I mean? I think you're saying that uh, the success or what constitutes success is defined by the partner organization you work with. Is that what you're saying? Um, because, uh, yeah, when we think of, because I, 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 I talked about a bit about this purposes or opportunities so where, where it could be in, in which um, field of actions um, it, um, we see usage cases or we've, 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 we've partly tried it out and these are very diverse. Um, so speaking about um, um, neighborhood building, community development, um, decision making processes in urban planning. Um, um, so these are very different contexts. Um, and, and in this context, I would uh, um, perceive um, shared walks as a 
a method within a mixed method approach. Um, so it's only one aspect, one method, so a tool uh, um, to achieve a goal. So in this context, the, the goals are to be defined um, 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 above um, um, the shared works. Um, um, then shared works fulfills. Um, so this is our approach in sharing or also um, this card set for other organizations um, to download it, to think on them themselves. Um, how can we implement it and then to make use of it? So this would be this aspect. The other one level is to talk about this uh, working research labs, um, 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 where it's more um, this question on these potentials of working in itself, which brought us to this um, card set also. Um, 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 and also this this question, what what we uh, um, posed in the beginning, or our interest, um, the potentials on uh, in directions of social inclusion via participation, via spatial appropriation. And here we come to the point: okay, how to measure this? Um, is it the quantity of people who um, take part uh, in the events, um, or is it more qualitative aspects, um, which are more than maybe interview based, uh, but on on very individual levels? I think this is what we got a lot in this phase of research from this working research labs, because here and it's leading, it's it's um, then linked to the question of how did we collect and what did we do. So in this phase, uh, um, we were um, using different methods um, and also experimenting with different methods um, um, for reflecting and evaluating so after the walks um, we implemented um, in some events um, it was suitable to group, group discussions we had face-to-face -face, um, interviews and besides interviews we also used um, artistic methods like um, 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 drawing um, uh, visual, visual forms of visualizations um, collecting materials it was also related to target groups and thinking okay um, um, when it's about language um, issues on um, younger um, um, people. So to get a, a quite rich, so we got collected a lot of material, I would say, um, but as it's also an artistic um, research, project, we were not into, um, um, so we collected a lot. Um, um, we, 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 we took things out of it. We used it very practical orientated to, to, to develop. So we, we did not go now in the, um, 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 and to, to deep analyze it, uh, um, um, the material in, in scientific um, um, uh, criteria. Um, right. And you publish the community maps that you build. Uh, we saw a screenshot of that in your presentation. Uh, yes. Do you publish more, uh, like the, the 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 reports, the interviews, the documents that you generate with these work workshops, or you leave no. it at? Um... I would say this is this is kind of two pairs of shoes. The one is um, um, the working research labs, as said. Um, the other is uh, the method as the method as we propose it now. It's um, related to this mapping aspect because it's a bit an either or. So what do you do after the works? Um, you could potentially do both: make interviews, talk with the people, then bring them to draw. But um, um, practical, pragmatically, practically, it's a bit too much. Um, um, and yeah. what we found, I think, what the challenge of the mapping, it, it's not so much product orientated that, that um, um, the, the, the main value is in the map. It's more this conceptual, these levels of, because um, when walking is a very individual um, 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 experience, perceptions and this sharing aspect is in a very also still intimate. It's, it's what is my decision, what do I want to share with my walking partner? So it's the first level of sharing from me uh, to, to the other. Um, um, and, and in this third step, it's really um, when it comes to how do we deal with the public? So now um, um, I was in a talk and I've shared more. I got to know somebody, um, 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 but what do I want to leave for public? So when it comes to mapping, it's yeah. also more related to this individual and to this decision. Yeah. Now I got my Fiona's mixed up. It turns out that we have two Fiona's. Uh, so just Fiona, what was your question? What are the chances of that, eh? Two Fiona's on one one webinar. I'm, 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 <laughs> not, I'm not so bad at statistics, but I have no answer to this question. <laughs> no. So um, I'm interested in um, how you've used this methodology with um, people who um, find walking difficult, um, and particularly walking in cities, so people with limited mobility, maybe older people, unaccompanied children. Um, and I've got a, I've got a personal vested interest in that because I'm losing my mobility. So my I've directly experienced 
being excluded from walks because mm. I can't keep up, for instance, or I can't walk as far as other people um, anymore. Um, and at some point I'll lose my ability to walk completely, I think, unless I move into onto wheels. Um, so I guess what are the challenges of using a methodology that looks like it excludes quite a lot of people um, in community building? specifically in a you know where your aim is to bring as many people as, pe as possible together and then you use a methodology that appears to exclude quite a lot of people yeah um yeah i think yeah. that's a very good question we have thought about it but uh, then it was a field we thought that we should really collaborate with an organization again because this was how we develop the methodology because we don't know people who have difficulties. So we should really collaborate with a group of people who know the needs uh, of people who have difficulties. We did it with, uh, not, not for children, but, but now with disabilities. Uh, but it could be, it was one of the plans for future. Uh, I think it's a very important part of such a tool to be developed. We just uh, collaborated with a youth organization, which totally, which is not exactly your question, but uh, working with specific groups, the uh, young people were totally not interested in walking. So this is not an age that we found out mm. that you would really like to go out walking. I don't know if Corona has changed things because this was really three years ago we started off. Now walking has a different, meaning yeah. for socializing so now maybe we should really have a look at it again how our habits have changed and how people are looking at walking uh, in a, as a social um, activity but yeah i think uh, this is a very important aspect we have to look at uh, for the future um someone who uh, is watching in a small group asked a similar question uh with the intriguing name of London Gray, Billy Jacqueline, uh, but it was also about um, um, people with reduced mobility participating in the mm -hmm. walks. And they, but they also asked if you have had people with reduced mobility and what their feedback was on uh, participation. No? Okay. Um, no. Now, you brought it up a little bit at the start of your talk, uh, but the other Fiona, uh -huh, I'm now getting my Fiona separate, I know who you are. Um, Ask uh, how you started with your very first walk, with your very first shared walk. Ah, okay. Uh, the very first. It, 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 it may, uh, because the, the interest, because there was before this question of the difference of um, uh, an area which is known quite well and an area which is not. Um, and interestingly, the first, um, the very first time um, we did it, we did um, cooperate with. Um, an organization which is uh, um, into a lot uh, dealing with um, city participation and um, um, where um, it's called Lugale Agenda, where they have different groups of interest um, of, of, of um, um, people uh, um, living in, in this area uh, and um, um, actively um, um, engaging for, for specific aspects. Um, and this brought us together with this group of um, um, activists who are. Um, um, issuing um, uh, city mobility of um, walking and bike, biking. So, and these were people who were really experts um, um, on the area, on the specific area, because yes, they were um, 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 highly engaged in, in, in this field. So we had a, a, a group of very interested people in mobility, especially walking and, and bike riding, which were experts on, 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 on um, 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 this area. And this was, uh, this, there was were this, this quite interesting impressions um, um, of um, um, these people who really got, uh, um, I think it was, it, I perceived it as a big push for us um, um, because um, the fear here was that these people might be bored. So they are people who are experts in, 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 in like um, um, the city area, they're into walking um, and um, and they they highly engaged um, um, and it was very inspiring this first. But please, Alim, tell you tell it was just this was just coming to my mind now. 
Yeah. Can you maybe also I mean, talk a little bit was... about other organizations that you've worked with in the past while you address this very question? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe this was the first event, uh, but maybe I will tell later the first idea how it came up. But the other organizations we collaborated was, for example, uh, one partner here in Vienna, uh, where we made this methodology sharing. This is a local agency for uh, housing. And Gebitz Petroing, I told you, this is also another local agency for community building in different uh, regions of the city or youth organizations, uh, and mostly art and uh, urban festivals uh, and art and walking conferences also. So this was developed in the social design studio. Uh, so it was also related to the artistic field, but that it's, it's kind of in between the, the social uh, uh, issues and artistic practice. So it can go both ways. It can also be taken up only for the experience itself as a playful card set. And it can really be individually used for that, for the sake of the experience itself. And that's also okay. But there are also it's other also dimensions. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just for the experience itself, you know, we don't have to measure it also, you know, we can't measure everything. And the yeah, first- You don't necessarily uh, have to measure it. Yeah. And the first idea, very, very first idea of shared walks and the name came up when I was making a, a, a social design workshop and where we tried to approach people, random people, there was no shared walks at that time, in a park, walking in pairs. And we were also two people and we were just going to people, can we share our walk with you or can we share your walk? And if, if you're in Vienna, and we are not in Istanbul or, you know, is this, you know, someone you don't know comes to you and asks you, can we share your work? Like they were, some people were like, okay, why? What do you want from us? But most of the people surprisingly accepted and really we had so nice conversations and I was so surprised with this. Uh, also, I had the prejudice that people won't accept but they did, and we really had nice conversations and walks together, very short. And at the end, we told them that this was part of a workshop and we were trying out, experimenting with the idea. And there, as it worked, then it's continued and developed up to, yeah, this way. Yeah. Um, Bob had a, a series of uh, questions um, that I'm going to let him uh, ask, uh, ask himself. Go for it, Bob. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, it all stems to this this thing. A, a, a definition of art was Collingwood's in the Principles of Art that the role of the artist is to work to prevent the corruption of consciousness. I'm wondering, uh, you know, effectively on a walk, would someone look at a building and say, that's a good piece of architecture, or that's an ugly piece of architecture, or that's an offensive piece of architecture. And then the ongoing conversation could be something like that. Can I take some action as a consequence of what I'm doing? Could I um, paint something on a, 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 a sheet and, and pin it in front of the building? Can I make a social intervention? So in effect, you're working with consciousness and applied consciousness and how far people are prepared to uh, buy into the principle that you've introduced them to do, i.e. go on a walk with them. You know, do they have, are they encouraged or, or out of debates is there a potential to take it further imaginatively? Well, on all levels, that this is the sort of essence of what I'm trying to get at. Are you trying? Can you use? Can you use these uh, opportunities to stretch people's uh, boundaries, basically, and make them um, experience, or for themselves, to find experiences beyond their own preconceptions? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. And for many of the projects, not only for shared walks, but many artistic interventions in public space. But this, um, as a methodology, I mean, we are not really pushing anyone or putting anyone in a position to make an intervention, if I get your question right, but really opening up uh, um, opportunity and uh, asking a question maybe. You know, these shared walks, you can take shared walks, the type of walk as a question, and it's totally up to the person who is taking the walk to do something or not. 
later or at that point. Uh, but this could also be if you decide, if we as artists decide to use shared walks as a way of intervening in a specific context, in a, in a specific way, I think that can also be used as a toolkit or a, as a door opener for that. But it doesn't necessarily propose by default that you have to do it, but it opens up. I don't know yeah, if but, answers your question. No, no, really, that's, that's avoiding the, the issue. I'm saying that basically you're asking people to take part in a walk. So they show up and they go on the walk. Now, once in terms of conceptual art, here's an example in a gallery sort of 20 years ago. You go in the gallery and the person said, don't come into the gallery unless you're prepared to go with whatever you find inside the gallery. You're, you're prepared to commit yourself to whatever. So they go inside the gallery and there's a note to everyone. Come outside the gallery, go down the street, turn left, go down the road to the station, get a train to such and such a place. It's i.e. to take a certain action and to go to experience an event. I'm wondering what that boundary is or have you considered it? And or the moral, it's not in a moral dimension because we're in the area of art now, which is out of morals. We're trying to explore, instead of exploration on a, pa on, on, on a canvas with our ideas, we're exploring with people in space and time and social interactions in a similar way that we manipulate color. There's obviously compliance and people must be, agree with it in, in terms of that, but you've got an opportunity here. There's an existential opportunity to uh, bring people in a way, it, it involve people in a way that possibly they haven't considered before. And through that, you'll be introducing one of the thrusts of, of contemporary art and introducing them to um, aspects of art that are being practiced universally right now. Yeah, I think um, it, it, it also depends on how you position. The one who uses the toolkit, not, I'm, t I'm not talking about ourselves now, who uses shared walks, how, to, how they position themselves as a social worker or as an artist. Because also it being out of the gallery, you know, uh, as an artist in public art uh, has different aspects to consider. If, you, if you're going in, a, especially in a local context, with uh, calling people for local part uh, at the local context for participation, I think a, I don't know. Maybe both of us are coming from social work kind of or socially engaged art practice background. We are more in. We had the approach to open up the space and leave it to people more on that side. But it can it could have really be done as a more uh, yeah different day, but it depends on the position you put yourself, I think, also. But Bernd, do you think, have anything to add? Um, yeah, I was thinking because um, um, in somehow you could say that uh, that um, shared walks, um, because we claim we are opening spaces, but um, it's also um, um, done by, um, there is an aspect of um, disciplination also because what we do so it's not that we open the door and say here is the, it would be the open walk and and Ella mentioned that um, what happens when people get this open walk that um, um, it's not always easy for them to handle with this openness it's like also pupils in school where the art teacher says um, you have a white paper or a canvas and now uh, make anything um, so um, without this direction. Please. But uh, so I think the first Great. step to 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 um, to deal with with freedom and, and with, uh, for appropriation is um, um, to question daily life routines, and this we do by this aspect of discipline. So what we bring in is that we propose a specific focus. We are not opening a, an empty space. We are very directive in this sense. So it's it's part of randomness. Um, but um, um, people um, are proposed a specific focus, uh, a reduction of, 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 of perceptions also or of behaviors, um, which, which brings in this possibility uh, um, of um, finding new aspects of maybe the already known um, by uh, um, a change of perception. 
and I think through this experience, um, 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 through this different experience, um, it's the first step of um, rethinking this um, 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 maybe daily life routines and start becoming creative or, or using creative. So maybe then the next step can be what you mentioned before um, um, to get um, into action or to the next time you walk aside for, um, independent from a shared walks um, 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 to deal with, with, with the surrounding and um, 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 yeah. Well, all right, can yeah, I just- well, I, I stop without an end point. All right, can I just make my last point? I'm sorry to keep on going. Is um, I would I would submit the idea that if you're because you're essentially initiating an idea for people to comply with to go along with. Now there's a dimension, a moral dimension in there. I would suggest that you there is a moral dimension that you to a degree direct the people within that. I.e., there's not you're saying you just leave them. Both of you are saying you just leave them over to, open to do whatever they want to do. But I would say from a moral point of view, that's slightly irresponsible, that there needs to be some aspect or dimension of, of, of leadership, of, 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 of directing the people, i.e. in a place, this is, a, you know, as a teacher basically, you're assuming a pedagogical situation here, to a particular experience. I mean, obviously they're experience from their own perspective, but you're leading them through a, a particular thing. There's a, a, you can't just open it and let them do anything. Because how can you judge that? How can you record it? How can you assess it? Uh, I maybe think I really did not. You're... I did not find the right words what I said before. Because what, what I was trying to say is that I think that we do direct um, by um, um, proposing um, 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 these specific types of walks. So um, it gives a direction, um, um, and I think that this aspect um, of guidance is fulfilled by the by the cards. In itself, and it's really depends. I, um, Bob, I think it also depends on the context a lot. In some contexts, for example, with one partner, we made the walks. After the walks, everyone came together. We made a round table for I don't know. It lasted almost two hours, and we had some leading questions because they they had some pre questions why they wanted to make this event. And they came to us with an agenda, and then we had prepared for the roundtable. This is another setting. Now, there are different types of ways of doing it. And there, we had a long discussion and where we moderated the discussion according to the questions they had asked while inviting us. Or in the socially engaged design conference, it was also with the art, uh, design students, and there we also had two main questions to direct this roundtable. So it was kind of a reflection session what, to evaluate together what they have gone through during the walks. So there may be these settings, but what we are telling is it's not essentially part of the toolkit or the, the, the what we propose. It can really be done for, for the experience itself. And I think it's still legit from my, from my pain point of view. I mean, it's, it's that open in that sense, yeah. Thank you very Good much. You. In the beginning, I think about the power of mapping and the empowerment the of a participant mapping. Or if we need another uh, aesthetic or a, a social inclusive mapping. So I'm just thinking about the visual mediation of a sharing work. So that's thinking a lot of this world of how we can sharing works. Um, I, Simone, if I paraphrase what I think you're saying, you're asking about whether we basically need um, to define what uh, makes a walk anew or what makes these shared walks uh, uh, what they are. We need a different vocabulary maybe is what you're asking. Uh, not even the vocabulary, also the aesthetic or the visual mediation of it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if we need or not, that's a huge question. Um, um, for mapping, maybe mapping has been used so many times in different contexts related to walking or not related to walking. That's another field. Maybe I would leave that part to Bernd uh, for the mapping. 
but uh, for walking, I mean, I don't think we need new aesthetic models for walking. No, I mean, and the, the thing we do is quite simple. It's, you know, everybody can, or yeah, it's no, but more... they can't. Yeah, 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 it, you're right. It's, it, it, talk... it, walking is a really privileged activity and people who can walk easily forget that completely. It's a really, yeah. really privileged activity. But it's privileged in a different sense, I would say, because it's less. Because um, I mean, when I, when I when I'm um, when we are talking about underprivileged people, often uh, um, we we first think of uh, uh, um, economically um, 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 disadvantaged uh, people who lack resources uh, when it comes to, for example, to consumption and things like that. Sure, there is also a relation from health to to monetary um, um, aspects that people yeah. um, who are poor have less. Um, um, so, uh, um, the privileged activity. If you want to look at it just economically. The, the 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 wealth of time required to just go for a walk for no purpose is privileged. If you want to look at it from a race point of view, the privilege of being able to walk in any neighbourhood you mm -hmm. want without being yeah. attacked or shot is really privileged. If you look at it from a sex or gender point of view, there are areas where women and times yeah. that women cannot walk alone. And I, I think one of my big bugbears about psychogeography is this the 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 unexamined privilege of walking and which mm -hmm. and it's time we question questioned it because it's a really i mean not just from a mobility point of view but however you cut it socially walking is privileged um, Bernd, can you maybe tie this a little bit into uh, uh henry lefebvre's ride to the city because you brought up Henri Lefebvre on Friday when we mm -hmm. had a little chat, and I, I believe mm -hmm. that's the context in which you brought it up. And because you yourself also work with um, um, an NGO that works with homeless people. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but this this all ties together in that in that context. Can you say a little bit a bit about this? Mm -hmm. I think what I was um, because a link for me to to Lefebvre starts with what I mentioned before this this routine. So I think um, uh, one uh, um, um, main um, main aspect or quality of shared walks is the potential to uh, um, to question routines. And um, when I think of uh, Lefebvre, um, that we say um, when it's about city making, um, who the production uh, um, of space on various level is um, um, is when it comes to the built environment and and also the appropriation of the environment, which is also um, 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 as a, as a um, interdependent de interdependent process of what is there. It proposes um, um, a behavior, and the behavior um, has an in, 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 uh, um, an, an impact um, on how the space is designed. But for this um, um, conscious, uh, for the conscious design process, it's a very exclusive process um, which mainly excludes um, um, the majority of people. So these processes, which are um, 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 designed by politicians, by professionalists, excluding um, um, people who use it, um, and the way this functions is often that people who use spaces are um, um, present in their daily life routines. Um, um, so there, there is a lack of awareness about um, the, the, the possibility of producing space or the impossibility of not reproducing space by um, um, unconsciously. Um, uh, moving in space. So as a moving object in space, you are creating or shaping, forming um, um, space, but uh, the people are just not aware um, um, of their um, 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 active um, position there. And in order to, to gain this awareness of um, being an active element in producing space, I think this, this is this connection to shared walks, this main interest that um, taking an activity that a lot of people do on a daily basis by going to work or um, moving space to, to do that thing, um, um, to find this practice as a, a, a um, as um, a creative process, um, um, drawing lines in space. Um, um, yes, uh, is it? Um, can you? Um, is it? Um, can you follow what I say, or does it make sense to you? 
Yeah. Um, it's um, you're talking, I think, about uh, making uh, participants uh, more independent um, actors in the process of um, um, yeah, creating space within the city, making the city their own, essentially. Yes, which is starting on a very individual basis, I think. Um, yeah. So as for first is to find out um, um, that you're not a passive object um, um, who is... Exactly. Um, but it has to start on a personal level because you can only do this yourself. <laughs> no one can do yeah. it for you. Um, uh, on a completely different subject, Andrew very early on asked uh, if you also considered or have worked with organizations that paired um, less conventional uh, groups of um, not even necessarily people. Andrew suggested the uh, was it humans and horses, uh, the elderly Dogs. and the very young. Yeah, yeah, have you also worked with this? No, that was an idea. Uh, we were in connection, but that didn't work uh, with an elderly house where we wanted to connect elderly people with different groups of people, but that we didn't, we didn't continue with that, but we considered once with the elderly people, but not, yeah, I mean, but we don't have to do it, by the way. I mean, anyone can take it and use yeah. it adapt it in a way to any, use it. Any of us in this room now can yeah, go please, out and find a horse and walk with a horse. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. And also, uh, Fiona, I'm, I would be really, uh, I would appreciate if you have ideas, I mean, for later we could be in contact, uh, how to develop this in this context. I really appreciate your input and feedback on the subject. Um, I We would look more on the social side, how segregated in segregated societies, for example, people can be brought together, but there are so different levels of segregation and also mm -hmm. inclusion, uninclusion. So I think all these uh, encounters, these talks help for that. And this is how we develop the methodology also. We learn all together. So Absolutely. we developed all these card set with people. It's not us, we just initiated the idea and it's done all together. So in that sense, uh, we will really appreciate if you have ideas right to us and then we can collaborate. We can really work on it together to develop something. If it's useful, it can help. Maybe it's not, you know, it doesn't have to work in every context. You know, this is not for everything. We will see. Mm. It's also a bit experimental. We see together, but we will be open. I will tell to Fiona, yeah. but to everyone that... to collaborate for new uh, openings. I also find this exclusive topic very really challenging and, and, and interesting. And I was now thinking, um, um, for example, uh, when thinking about activity radius. So, so there are, because you, you mentioned um, um, the, the time resources and the other is ability resources. So, um, and I was, um, before I was working in my, in my current position, I was dealing a lot with in, in neighborhoods um, um, of um, where marginalized um, uh, groups or social economy uh, marginalized groups um, mainly lived and housed, and and there you saw differences, um, um, specifics like um, these close areas. So, you know, people who who lack resources are often more uh, um, back related to their direct home because um, they lack mobility, so they are more um, 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 dependent on on. Um, resources which are directly in front of the house door or in the in the close neighborhood yeah. um, so it can be also very in, in in this so to think of shared walks because we also mentioned the neighborhood work um in 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 uh, what can the potential be thinking of a long-term project dealing with this neighborhood to bring because there it's a lot often um, finding these resources sharing interests um cre create networks especially people who don't have abilities to meet everywhere um or also the, the close neighbors or or they deal with anonymity a breakup. So I think this can be a very interesting aspect when specifically looking at forms of exclusions and and finding possibilities to to um, actively deal with this. And what I think um, both of you have uh, suggested is really fabulous. Um, I don't want to sort of pick holes at it or anything like that. And I think the fact that you're open to trying it out with lots of different groups is fantastic. I think that's really good. But what I would say is that what you're you're doing is nothing, well, nothing. It's, it's a little bit more, but not a lot more than happens every day. 
in what urban design and transport professionals are doing. Um, and so, I, I, you know, I would say that this is a kind of thing which is which is good, but it's also Im important that I think uh, that I don't know how many other people in the room um, are like me, are qualified as an urban designer and has worked as a transport planner. But I mean, we would do this every day, uh, every hour of the day. We, you know, we work to be as inclusive, inclusive as possible. So we look at what different techniques of uh, walking and traveling uh, across the space. And uh, one of the areas that I think uh, would be you would be worth exploring would be the ideas of shared space, um, which, which is a Dutch phenomenon originally and then has now spread uh, much across the world. It's highly contested by uh, people who are blind and uh, visually impaired, but it's the idea of trying to uh, create equity uh, around mobility through uh, spaces between buildings. So, you know, you could be looking at sort of Jan Gell in Denmark and uh, uh, the work that he's done. But all of this kind of stuff is meat and two veg to urban designers and transport planners. You know, th this was the kind of stuff that I was doing day in, day out for 20 years, you know. So I find it kind of interesting that kind of artists or social uh, researchers are coming at it and talking about it. It's really good. I'm really, I love it. I love the idea that that's happening. And I think it's a sort of, we need to sort of uh, broaden this because we kind of work in silos. I'm absolutely certain that if you go to an urban designer or a transport professional and say to them, I want you to work with a bunch of artists about exploring the city in, in, uh, in coupling up strangers, uh, they'd go like, oh, you know, We've, uh, we, we've got to get on with what we've got to get on and let the artists faff around with what they're doing. And, and you know, and I think that's, uh, that, that's a problem. We, we do work in these kind of silos. And one of the great things about Vienna is that you have a fantastic walking environment. I mean, it, 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 it's the envy of most of Europe, actually. The central core of Vienna is incredible. So, I mean, you know, I, I think it's, um, it's interesting that you're, you're doing this experiment in, in Vienna but I'm really interested in where you've done it elsewhere because Vienna is quite exceptional. Anyway, so yeah. that's my little my little spiel. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right, Andrew. This is one of the most privileged cities, I think, for walking. We in the city of Vienna, we have the directorate for walking, and there's a team only working for walking. And in the first uh, stages of our project, we have already met them. Uh, there is also a director for biking and then they're also working so these are their daily work but also i think these combining these different groups of people the perspective of the artist and the designer and perspective of the the working uh, in the urban design work could be interesting in ways that not only thinking it in a functional way but there is also so much potential in this field that could go more for imagination, more narration, more stories. So I think how can we look at the intersection of these two fields uh, could be interesting. So in that sense, you're right, we're doing it apparently, but we are not doing it to change any urban design. So this is not our aim. This is not my job to, to change, to but give what an input we... to, to the urban design field could be if we collaborate with them, but that's not the main purpose. Yeah. Sorry. And you gave a good word because you were saying this working in silos phenomena and and, and there is, um, it's, it's quite a big pity because also the aspect that Vienna is a perfect city. Yes, it is in some way, but um, um, definitely um, in what, what was a very interesting possibility uh, to deal with this working in silos is there is a big potential also um, using this method um, that we, um, struggled to try out um, because um, not only in Austria, I think, um, but here, uh, um, um, for example, tra train stations are, are are in the process of being rebuilt. So in, there has also been the transformation of the main um, 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 uh, train station in Vienna. Um, and this train station rebuildment um, uh, um, is also combined with an area development. So it's, um, um, it's a complex, interesting process of, of city development um, where various professionists um, 
um, are included. There are the professionals, the architects, you see the urban planners, but also um, there are already existing neighborhoods, the new neighborhoods we will show up. The show social workers, police, um, um, when it's about train station, it's always about social issues, criminality, these aspects. Um, so, um, um, a big put and, and then you have these people all being in their silos, so they're all dealing with this area. Some are all working on this area. There are over territorial, territorially overlapping, like the, the passengers with the policemen, with the drug addict, with um, 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 the social workers. Um, so these shared walks can be a, a very cool, uh, interesting um, a possibility then. Um, um, if you manage to find a setting where you can really include these different professionists, if they, if the policeman walks together with the architects in the shared walks, the social worker with um, 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 the, the, the urban planner um, and the neighbor with, I don't know, it's random, um, then you get this exchange of perspectives and this, this, these silos which, which start to, to interact where, where also um, um, can inspire um, um, and can new dialogues can happen, which would not happen um, um, elsewhere. I think this this can also be very uh, nice. In fact, we wanted to do this, and um, um, Vienna is a very cool city, but it's also a highly re regulated city, and um, um, we did not get the permission um, to be able to use the area to do uh, um, um, such a thing, as it's also a commercialized space. So it was not about the permission; it was that it's. Um, 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 ÖBB, like a former uh, national good, is now privatized, and um, they kept they um, um, they did they do not foresee on this public place as a train station. You would imagine it to be um, a non-commercial um, uh, happening there. So the the easiest thing they can give you is um, um, a commercial uh, um, um, setting, which would have costed some thousand euros to just uh, build a table there. Um, so this is an aspect of a very regulated and very also um, um, commodificated um, um, city. The bane of public-private spaces. Um, I think Henry yes. Lefebvre would be sad. Um, yes. And so, and so would uh, Guy Debord. Uh, I have two more practical questions on uh, shared walks, uh, or very uh, yeah, practical questions. One is where do the icons come from that you use? What do they represent? Uh, you mean on the cards? Yeah, you have your what is it, five or six uh, types of walks, and uh, they to me they look like a uh, American uh, hobo uh, uh, signage. Oh, uh, if you okay. don't know what that is, <laughs> uh, like so, what? Uh, uh, in the, so uh, hoboism, American hoboism, uh, was uh, uh, was something from the late 19th century, early 20th century, predominantly basically people who would uh, travel from city to city, do old jobs. Uh, uh, sleep uh, in abandoned train cars, um, and this was a subculture where um, members of this subculture would uh, leave notes to each other uh, by marking houses, bridges with uh, chalk, and each of these marks would represent something. And they they would not, they, I mean, they could write stuff down, but that everyone would be able to read. So they wouldn't write stuff down. They would use symbols which would signify particular. Features. Uh, it could be something like uh, this: in this house, somebody lives who will certainly give you a meal, or it would be uh, a direction to a place where you could sleep. Um, and they look like the signage that you use for shared walks. But apparently, that's not where you got it from. So where did you no, get it no, from? No, 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 no. I mean, it's out of our minds. It's just what these six categories uh, resembled. So it's mainly. I worked with our designer uh, and we kind of worked on them on yeah so I I, I should check my subconscious now about well, the or check the designer oh, maybe the de yeah no, no I mean most of them came from me so that's why I should really check my subconscious okay. how it's related well, check it out yeah you'll okay. you'll be surprised uh, and then a second question, which is a little bit related, you brought it up also in your presentation and you mentioned it explicitly on uh, the website is that the cards are released under a Creative Commons license, but the specific license that you use is, is CC, uh, NC, ND. Creative Commons, non-commercial, no derivatives. Um, and how do you see the non-derivative part in the licensing of this deck of cards? 
So as far as I know, this non-derivative means that people can't make a change and publish it, but they can make a change as they use it they, in their practice. I see. Or, yeah, as, at least we interpret it that way. So, I mean, it, we, we are not using it commercially. We're giving it for free, so we don't want anyone to use it commercially. That's, I think, fair enough. Uh, and for the derivative, we are all, from the beginning, we say that you can, there are also empty cards. If you get the card set, uh, you will have two empty cards where you can really write on site and, you know, add or print empty cards to write on them or design them. So it's mainly, it, it can be adaptable, but the derivatives like the shared walls climate change set, we are doing it because this is, yeah, this is the idea. We didn't give yeah, the, the, the right to make shared walks something to anyone, I think. I okay. think we share enough. <laughs> we share enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah I we, think so. Maybe we don't. Don't we? Don't we share enough? <laughs> as, a, as, a, as humanity? Maybe not, huh? Maybe not, um, yeah. But maybe as a, as a people in this particular room, maybe we do. Which leaves me to say again, thank you very much, uh, Elam and Bernd. Um, I thought it was a wonderful discussion and that we will see you again at our next cafe or the one after that or at both. So thanks and goodbye. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank for you. Everyone.